Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Our listener support campaign continues. You can support the show on a one-time basis uh, by mailing in a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Also, I do invite you to check out our World War II podcast at thewar.greatdetectives.net. 277 episodes uh, starting at the pre-war era and going all the way through uh, to even some post-war material. I do encourage you to check it out if you're interested in World War II history. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby, and this one is Hudson Family Deaths. Mystery is my hobby. Inspector Noah Danton and I had not been out of the city for some time when I received an urgent telephone call from Mr. Sam Hudson, an artist and magazine illustrator of Oak Ridge. We both welcomed the chance for a breath of country air. Unknown to us, Sam Hudson had had an unusual conversation with his half-sister, Mary, that morning. Sam? Huh? Oh, it's you, Mary. Yes, it's me. Sam, I want to talk to you. Now, now, my dear, I've asked you not to disturb me when I'm working. Sam, this is important. Put down the brush and palette and listen to me. Now, look here, Mary. I promised Robinson I'd have this landscape done by Monday. I intend to keep that promise. Sam, Cousin John is dead. He died of a cerebral hemorrhage. What of it? I'm sorry, Mary, but we hardly knew John. Sam, you don't understand. He died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Doesn't that mean anything to you? A lot of people die of cerebral hemorrhage. I don't want to appear rude, Mary, but really... Sam, give me that brush. Hey, stop that. Mary, what the devil? Now, Sam Hudson, you listen to me. Cousin John is the third in our family to die of a brain hemorrhage within the past month. So what? Maybe the family's having an epidemic of brain hemorrhage. Now, give me that brush. No. Sam, you may be so wrapped up in your work that these deaths mean nothing to you, but to me they mean a great deal. Why, for heaven's sake? Because George Hudson will be next, and then you. George, and then... (laughs) Mary, you can't be serious. I am serious, Sam, very serious. Cousin Elliot was first, then Henry, and now it's George's turn. Then comes me. Yes. There's a small fortune in our family, Sam. According to the terms of Grandfather Hudson's will, it's to be handed down and... In the order I've just named. Mary, you're wonderful. So Henry killed Elliot to get the fortune. Then John murdered Henry, and George killed John. Then, hey, I must be the one who's going to murder George. Uh, Now, I wonder when I'm going to do it. I'm pretty busy. Sam, I I wish you wouldn't laugh at me. I'm frightened. Nonsense. Now, forget this, Mary. You're being entirely too melodramatic. I can't forget it. It isn't just coincidence that those three people died. Of course it's coincidence. Now, I listen to me. Elliot and John and Henry lived miles apart. Their deaths were spread over a period of months. I know, but you're all I had. You, Dean Woodford. (laughs) When my time comes, you'll inherit the family fortune, marry Dean Woodford, and live happily ever after. Well, all right, Sam. Maybe I am overly concerned. Of course you are. But you will be careful. Promise? I promise. Now... Hey, there's Dean coming up to drive. Go on out and have a time for yourselves. Only don't scare him with any of your wild stories. All right, Sam. Oh, I'm asking Dean to stay to lunch. Well, I'm going into my study. You can have the place to yourself. See you at lunch. Hello, Dean. Hi, honey. How's things? Just fine. Thanks for coming in. Where's Sam? In the study. Asked me to come out for a walk. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's walk down to the river, honey. It's such a swell day. All right. Sam won't mind. I told him that you were going to stay for lunch. Well? 
I did what you said, Dean. I tried him out. What did he say? How'd he act? Are you satisfied? Yes. Sam's not suspicious. I'm sure of it. Oh, good, good. I told you that's the way it'd be. I know, but I had to find out. I gave him every chance the same thing to do. Well, you're too jittery, darling. <laughs> no one's suspicious. They couldn't be. Why, it's a perfect setup. Dean. Yeah? Stop here. We're out of sight of the house now. Dean, I... I... Say, what's the matter? Come on, come on, speak up. Has anything happened? Oh, no, Dean. Nothing, only... Dean, you do love me, don't you? <laughs> Is that all that's worrying you? Come here. Uh, does that mean anything to you? Uh, Dean. Dean, I love you so. Uh, you won't regret it, honey. After this job is over, we'll have plenty of dough and plenty of time to enjoy ourselves. Dean, is it necessary that Sam... Now, look, darling, there's no other way. You know that. You've known it right from the start. Oh, I know, but Sam's my half-brother and... And what has he ever done for you? Made a drudge out of you. Made you live up here in the sticks. But he did give me a home. Sure, sure, why not? He needed a housekeeper. He had a few bucks of his own. And he couldn't stand it to have anyone else around while he worked. So you were the suckers. Oh, you're right, Sam. You're right. I wish it were over. Oh, stop worrying. In four days, it will be over. First your cousin George, and then Sam. <laughs> Cerebral hemorrhage. What a laugh. Even the doctors don't know. And there isn't a chance of them finding out. Is there, dear? Not a chance, baby. Not a chance. They're all like that brother of yours. Too dumb even to think about it. <laughs> This is Sam Hudson, Mr. Drake. I'm up here at my place at Oak Ridge. Yes, Mr. Hudson? Drake, if possible, I'd like to have you take a run up here. Oh, is something wrong, Mr. Hudson? I don't know yet. You see, three members of my family have died within the past six months. All of cerebral hemorrhage. Well, that sounds like an unusual coincidence. Too unusual, Mr. Drake. My sister is... Well, you see, there's a small fortune in the family that's handed down from one cousin to another upon the death of the first. I see. And uh, one of you is next in line? Yes. After my cousin George dies, the money comes to me. You know how women are, Drake. Mary's worried. And, uh, you? I must confess, Mary's got me going, too. I, I wouldn't want her to know I made this call. It would only worry her more. Still, I think an investigation would do no harm. On the other hand, if you'd rather not... I'm sorry, Mr. Hudson. It sounds like an interesting case. I'll get hold of Inspector Danton, and we'll take the first train up there tomorrow. <laughs> I can tell you, Inspector, Sam Hudson suspects that he's going to be murdered because three of his cousins have died of a cerebral hemorrhage. That part that just doesn't make sense. It might when we hear the rest of the details. Okay, but it sounds nuts to me. Guys who die of cerebral hemorrhages aren't murdered. <laughs> Stop worrying, Inspector. Right, sir, a couple of days in the country will do us both good. Right, yes, boy. Have you any local papers, one published in Oak Ridge? You betcha, mister. Oak Ridge Gazette. There you are. Thanks. It's three cents. Say the boy, will you, Inspector? Hey, the... Oh, sure, sure. Sucker me. Here. Here you are, bub. Can you break a nickel? Break a nickel? Okay, okay. <laughs> Keep the change. Thank you, sir. Newspapers, Mike. Wait a minute. Huh. Here's something, Inspector. Rudy Neb in another jam. No, no, it isn't a comic strip, Inspector. It's right here on the front page. Yeah? George Hudson, a cousin of Sam, died last night. What did he die of? A cerebral hemorrhage, Inspector. Yes? Good afternoon. Is Mr. Sam Hudson in? Sam? No, he isn't. He's in New York. New York? That's odd. Can you uh, tell me when he left? Why should I? And why is it so odd that Mr. Hudson is in New York? Who are you men, anyway? Who are we, lady? We're here to ask the questions, not answer them. Now, look... Hey, Inspector. Huh? I'm sorry, Mrs. Hudson. You are Mrs. Hudson, I presume? No, I'm not. I'm Mary Hudson. Sam Taster. I see. Thank you. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Denton. Oh, please. Everybody asks surprise when there's a cop in the crowd. Anything wrong, darling? Oh, Dean, these, these men are policemen. 
This is my fiancé, Dean Woodson. Well, 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 what's going on, boys? Bank robbery or something? We wouldn't know, chum. Murder is our hobby. Murder? Don't be yeah. alarmed, darling. I've heard of this man, Drake. He writes books about murder. He's uh, harmless. Thank you. Suppose we all step inside out of the cold. That's better. This country air bothers my hay fever. Now, see here, i All right, tut, tut, now. Never argue with a cop, Junior. Okay, Bart, go ahead and ask your question. Well, sorry to have to intrude on you folks like this, but, uh, Miss Hudson, we've reason to believe that your brother might be in danger. But why? What, what Would you mind it... telling me exactly when your brother left for New York? Why, it was yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, yesterday morning. He had to deliver a painting to Jed Robinson of National Magazine. You were quite sure he left yesterday morning? Yes. Something happened to Sam? I don't know. Miss Hudson, I'm betraying a confidence in telling you this. Your uh, brother called me yesterday. Sam called you? Yes, he felt that you were worried because of the deaths of your three cousins, and Sam was frank to admit that he was worried also. That's mm -hmm. sort of nonsense. Mary's cousins died of cerebral hemorrhages. A mere coincidence. I'm inclined to agree with you, Woodford. If George Hudson hadn't died yesterday, also of a cerebral hemorrhage. Then you know about George. Why yes. shouldn't we? It's in all the papers. You know, Barty, Sam Hudson was worried enough to call now you... Now, listen, this thing is getting to be funny. What if Sam did call yesterday? That doesn't mean that he was home when he made the call. There are pay stations all the way to New York. That's true, Woodford. So why did Mr. Hudson arrange to see me in New York if he was coming down anyway? Yeah. Why did he insist that we come up here? I don't know. You'll have to take that up with Sam. Yes, we intend to, Woodford. Inspector, I think you'd better call National Magazine and ask Mr. Robinson a few questions. <laughs> happens that Mary and I are engaged to be married, and mm -hmm. I feel that I have the right to protect her. Do you, you think she needs protecting, Woodford? The way you're acting, yes. I always say give a guy enough rope and he'll hang himself. Just what do you mean by that, Danton? Oh, nothing. Only I was wondering why Miss Hudson said her brother left for New York yesterday to keep an appointment when the man he had the appointment with says it wasn't until tomorrow. Well, I can't see if that means anything. Sam finished the landscape earlier than he expected to. Went to New York on the chance that he could see Mr. Robinson today. Without uh, calling Robinson first? How Sam arranges his appointments is no concern of mine. Mm. Or yours. You're right, darling. Drake, in your quest for book material, you seem to make mountains out of molehills. It usually pays off, rather. Well, this is ridiculous. I certainly don't intend to subject myself to any further questions. Miss Hudson, you seem to think that Inspector Danton and I are accusing you of something. Well, it certainly sounds like Let it. I assure you we're not. Our sole purpose in being here is to help your brother... If he's in trouble. Well, he's not. Now, look, if it's being paid that you two are worried about, I'll give you a check myself and you can go on home. Well, now, that's mighty thoughtful of the young man, but... Yes, yes, it is, Inspector, and I think we'll take him up on it. Huh? We can make out that check for $150, Woodburn. What? You don't mean... Yes, I think we're wasting our time here, Inspector. Huh? If anything had happened to Sam Hudson, we'd have heard about it before but now. But look, only... Write out your check, Mr. Woodburn. When Hudson returns, he can give us a ring if he's still worried. Well, I, uh, you was, uh, look, you said yourself on the train. Yeah, that's that... right, 150. Thank you, Woodford. Oh. We're sorry to bother you, folks. Come along, Inspector. Uh. This seems to be one time when we've gone on a wild goose chase. <laughs> Still don't get it, Bart. You walk out on the deal. Now, here we are on a plane heading for Bangor, Maine. Why? If possible, Inspector, I want to save the life of Sam Hudson. Save his life? For crying out loud, we don't even know where the guy is. What the heck are you talking about? Something you said on the train, Inspector. Of mice? Yes. You said if a man died of a cerebral hemorrhage, he hasn't been murdered. Well, that's true. You can't force a man to have a brain hemorrhage, can you? I don't know. But the undertaker who buried Elliot Hudson when he died six months ago might give us the answer. That's right, I'm Abe Shaw. I'm an undertaker and I buried Elliot Hudson. Now, who be you? Did you know Elliot very well, Abe? Sure did, know him all my life. I swear it. Abe, I want to ask you something, and I want you to think hard. Was there anything strange about Elliot's corpse? Strange? Hmm. What do you mean? Any bruises or evidence of violence? Violence? Mm, no, let me think now. 
No, no, can't say there was. Leg swollen a bit. Scar on his cheek. Hadn't been there for ten years, though. Face bloated, son. All that's natural. What you want to know for? We're studying to be corpses. Oh, funny guy, eh? Yeah? Now, you look at here, you city... Oh, all right, Abe, you've helped yeah. us a lot. Now, I don't suppose that uh, you know the doctor who signed Elliot Hudson's death certificate. Sure I do. Everybody knows Doc Hayward. Oh, and Doc Hayward said that the death was due to a terrible hemorrhage. Yep, right? terrible hemorrhage, that's right. Abe, had Elliot Hudson been seriously ill for some time? How should I know? I never seen him much. He lived alone. Folks don't ask undertakers to call on him. <laughs> Now, uh, look, now, why don't you two go see Doc Hayward instead of asking me so gall darn many questions? We intend to do that, Abe. Not only are we going to call on Doc Hayward, but on the doctors who attended both John and George Hudson. Come on, Inspector. I think we've hit upon our first clue. Uh... There's just one more question I'd like to have you answer, Dr. Hayward. Did you ever know a case in which a cerebral hemorrhage had been induced? Certainly not. Such an idea is preposterous. Okay. Now, look here, Scranton or Danton or whatever your name is. When I say John Hudson was one of the best-looking corpses I ever had in my morgue, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. You don't have to get tough about it. That's all I can tell you, Mr. Drake. John Hudson died naturally of cerebral hemorrhage, and I'm sure of it. Thank you, Doctor. Well, Bart, that's the last of them. Mm -hmm. They all told us the same thing. You sound discouraged, Inspector. Well, aren't you? This is the third jerkwater town we've visited in the last two days. And what's it got us? It's got us a lot, Inspector. Oh, it has. Eh? Yes. Now we know it was not mere coincidence that four men have died of brain hemorrhage within the last six months. Oh, we do? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I missed something. I don't suppose you want to let me in on this secret, would you, Bart? But of course, Inspector. Oh, say, by the way, have you got our plane ticket? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got him. There's plenty of time. Now, what was it? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, Inspector, the reason that I know those four men did not die naturally is... I wish Sam were, were not. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Listen, baby. We're in this up to our necks. Now, quit your bawling. In another day, it'll be all over. Oh, Dean, do we have... Yes. I've gone too far in this to stop now. Besides, five murders are no worse than one in the eyes of the law. Well? Are you going to quit that bawling? Sorry, Dean. Oh, that's... Better. Now, tomorrow, when I bring Sam in, I remember what you're going to say to Doc Ambrose. I won't protect him. Sam has been in New York for the past three days. He came into the house complaining of a headache and went right up to bed. Perfect. About an hour later, you went up to see if he was all right. You found him unconscious and called Doc Ambrose. And Dr. Ambrose will say that Sam died of a terrible hemorrhage. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. He can't say otherwise. <laughs> It's perfect, baby, perfect. Dean? Yeah? Look out there. It's those policemen. What the devil are they doing back here? Oh, Dean, I'm scared. Now, quit that. Get hold of yourself. Yeah, it's them, all right. They're coming in here. Dean, could they have found anything out? No. Now, remember that. There isn't a chance that they could find out a thing. They'll probably pretend that they have, and we've got to play the game. All right, Dean. Come on. Let's see what they want. Sorry, Miss Hudson, to have to intrude upon you again so soon, but certain things have come up. Now, just a minute, Drake. We put up with your rudeness once before. And you're going to do it again, Bob, one side. How dare you force your way into my house? Oh, we dare anything, lady. We're brave men. Besides, this time we got a warrant. A warrant? Yes, search warrant. Okay, Bob. 
Where do you want to begin? Suppose you take a quick look around the house, Inspector. I'd like to ask these people a few questions. Good idea. If you need me just yet. Right. Mr. Drake. I absolutely refuse to answer any more questions. That's up to you, Miss Hudson. However, after I tell you the information and uh, the evidence that we've collected, you may change your mind. Evidence? Don't listen to him, Mary. He's trying to trick you. I don't think I'll have to resort to tricks, Woodford. Miss Hudson, I suppose you know that four of your cousins have died of terrible hemorrhages during the last six months. Yes, I know about it. Why? And, of course, you know that there was a sum of money handed from one to the other. I can't see as that concerns you. Oh, but it does, Miss Hudson, because the last one to receive the fortune was... Or would have been your brother Sam, and Sam is my client. Well? In the event of Sam's death, you would inherit the money, isn't that true? Yes, it's true. What about it? After you inherited the money, Woodford was going to marry you. What the devil are you talking about, Trent? I'm building a case, Woodford, against you and Miss Mary Hudson, a case of murder. Murder? (laughs) Are you trying to tell us that Mary's cousins were murdered? That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, Woodford. Furthermore, you and Miss Hudson are the murderers. (laughs) You're crazy. They died of brain hemorrhages. You haven't got a thing on it. Don't listen to him, Mary. Nothing to him about the place is plain. I didn't expect we'd find anything in the house, Inspector. You folks won't mind if we look around outside, will you? Yes, we will. This thing has gone far enough. Now, you two get out of here. Take it easy, pal. Holding a gun on an officer of the law is a serious offense. Forcing your way into a private residence is also a serious offense. Besides, I have a permit to carry this gun. And we got a warrant to come into this house. How do we know you have? How do we know you're even cops? We're telling you, that's why. Yeah? Yeah. Mary, go into the kitchen and call police headquarters. We'll settle this thing right now. But, Dean... Do as I say. You know where the phone is. Yes, and she knows it isn't in the kitchen. Good for her. That's as nice an act as I've seen in a long time. Now I know why you were able to convince Sam Hudson's cousins that you meant no harm. Drake, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do, Woodford. You're telling Miss Hudson well, to go... Well, Mary, are you going? Oh, uh, right, Dean. No, you don't, lady. Keep your hands off me. Sorry, ma'am, but this is necessary. Okay, Woodford... Put on that gun. Take your hands off her, copper. I... I wouldn't, Bob. You'll hit the lady. Dean, don't you? I don't intend to. Instead, I'm going to make that phone call myself. Hey, that's a switch. I thought the guy was actually going to show his hand. No, not yet, Inspector. Woodford's going to play the game to the very end. Let me go. Just a minute. Never mind the girl, Inspector. Come along. Okay, but this isn't the way I'd play it. Woodford went through that door. Yeah, sure he did, but... Uh... Yeah. So now what do we do? Break it down? No, we don't have to, Inspector. Woodford won't go far. I'm sure of that. Hey, now the girl's gone. Splendid. I think we'll find them both waiting for us in the garage. Yeah. And you still think those two will be waiting for us inside? Mm -hmm. I'm positive of it, Inspector. Why? Because Woodford still has hopes that he's committed a perfect crime. Here's the garage door, Inspector. Here, help me grab all those. Okay. It's dark in here. All the windows are coming. Yes, and for a good reason. Uh, There are our friends over there in the corner. Oh, Mr. Gates. Something terrible has happened. Yes, I see it has. Is that your brother's body lying on the floor? Don't get any ideas, Drake. Sam was dead when we found him. There isn't a mark of violence on him. It's true, Mr. Drake. Dean lost his head back there in the house and ran out here to get his car. He found Sam just as he seen. Now, that's what I call thinking on your feet, lady. <laughs> yes. Turn on the lights, will you, Inspector? That's a good idea. You won't find any marks on him, I tell you. Sam died of... Of a cerebral hemorrhage. Is that right, Woodford? Uh, well, there's the light. Let's have a look. There's nothing to look at. Dean's right. I think we'd better call a doctor. And I think we'd better take a look at your brother's ankles, Miss Hudson. Oh, my God, Woodford's got a gun. I see he has. What's it? Hey! He hit the girl with a dirty... Put your hands up. <laughs> I guess he doesn't hear you, Inspector. No, too bad, too. Well? 
That did it, Inspector. Hey, Stan, it isn't from a cerebral hemorrhage either. <laughs> That finishes another one. Yeah, and both Mary Hudson and Dean are lucky to be dead instead of waiting for the electric chair. Yes, it probably is better the way things are. Strange, isn't it, how some men are so egotistical that they feel they can't be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> isn't it, though? <laughs> uh, you're thinking of uh, Woodford, of course. Of course. <laughs> right up until the last, he believed that because Sam Houston died of a cerebral hemorrhage, no one would suspect murder. No one but the great Barton Drake, who's smarter than anybody else. Thank you, Inspector. You're welcome. Now, <laughs> tell me how you know. Gladly, old crank. Cerebral hemorrhages are caused by the bursting of blood vessels in the brain, right? Is that a fact? Hmm. Now, a number of things could bring them on, but a sudden rush of blood to the head is the most effective. So that's why Woodford found and gagged his victims and... Suspended them by their ankles. That's it, Inspector. It was necessary to keep them in that position for about three days. And that brought on the hemorrhage. Yes. No marks of violence, mind you. Even the police medical examiner would be forced to pronounce death due to a hemorrhage. But Jake knew it was murder. Yes. You know why? Because all the doctors we talked to mentioned the dead bodies had swollen ankles and legs. And, Inspector, Sam Houston was supposed to be in New York, yet no one knew where he was. So you put two or two together, eh? Right. Oh, Inspector, it's a pity we arrived too late in Oak Ridge, too late to save Sam's life. Yeah, but it's lucky that Dean Woodford didn't guess that someone else is kind of egotistical, too. Inspector, you don't mean yes, that I... Yes, I do, but, but oh, Inspector, boy. that's only because mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, as murder plots go, this one seems like it might technically work, but I'm a bit dubious on the practicality of it. And I think it would be hard for the sister, who is kind of wavering to go through this whole process for three days uh, and to follow through with her brother. I could believe something where you know, it was done and he uh, died, you know, pretty quickly. But three days like that, if there's a doctor or other expert who would clear it to comment on the scientific plausibility, I'm certainly open to that. It just seems a bit involved to me. And uh, we did get some confirmation of something that a listener observed about Denton being cheap. Uh, when he had this uh, situation where he groused about uh, having to pay for the newspaper, which were not all that expensive, and expected change for his nickel. And we also did get a hint that this was from earlier in the run when the series was uh, Murder is My Hobby. Then uh, for syndicated reruns, Change to Mystery is My Hobby when... Danton actually said the phrase, that murder is our hobby. Well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Jesse, Patreon supporter since March of 2016, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Well, that's all for now. If you do enjoy the podcast, I do encourage you to rate it uh, wherever you uh, uh, listen to the podcast or uh, your, your podcast store, such as the Apple Podcast Store. And you can also leave a review. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.